All right, this next video, I'm gonna show you how to make a sip that's self-irrigating pot. And these things are fantastic. They'll grow your trees really big the first year, get a really thick trunk. They're about 20 gallons. And you put the water in, about two and a half gallons, and it'll water all week. So take a look at last year's uh, sip trees and look at how thick these trunks are. This is Oban. This is a Fig du Monde variety. And you can see how thick those trunks are down here at the base. I can touch my fingers barely. And I have pretty big hands. Okay, so this is Craven's Craving and LeBrant. And this is a Smith tree. And this was a little cutting at the end of the year before. So this wasn't a cutting just last year. But look how thick that thing is. That thing's huge. Uh, Smith tree. And this has probably uh, 14 or 15 uh, Braba on it. So it's October 22nd. And a quick little video. These are my trees that I have in sips, uh, self-irrigating pot, I think that's what that stands for. And this is Joel Noir, I've cut that back, taken some cuttings. This is uh, Smith, uh, no cuttings taken at all. Brant, that I took a couple cuttings from. Craven's Craving, that one's intact, as well as uh, this one, Oban taken some cuttings off of this one but I've had a couple of very close freezes or frosts in Cincinnati Ohio uh, again it's October 22nd today but these are all in sips and uh, you have a water reservoir at the bottom you fill it through that little hole and uh, it only stays there you put a little hole inside and so you can't overfill it but look how healthy these are just healthy, uh, green, no yellowing. And throughout the summer, I typically would put uh, a fertilizer mix inside the water. And so they would just, anytime they got water, uh, they would wick it up through the uh, soil and roots, would get down there pretty quickly. They'd take a drink anytime they wanted. But I quit for the last month at least, given any sort of fertilizer. And uh, the potting mix does have some organic matter, um, some compost from my compost bin, but uh, you know, maybe a, a third thereabouts. But that gets used up. Anyway, I'll come back. How's it going folks? So today I have a video for you on how to make a self-irrigating pot or a SIP, S-I-P. Uh, this is a method that's been around for a good while and was really popularized by a guy called Leon. And he has a channel, Gardening with Leon, where he started doing this. And um, I made some SIPs and I used um, a blue pot. Um, and about this is about 20 gallons so anyway I use that for tomatoes for peppers and they grow really well so the idea is that you fill this with um, you have a little pipe and you fill that with water water sits at the bottom of your pot you drill a hole and you fill the water through a little pipe and any it only goes up to four inches or three inches wherever you drill your hole and any excess drains out. And so the rest you fill up with soil and the soil will, um, the roots and soil will get down around that pipe and will wick up and drink anytime the plant needs it. And last year, I posted a, a short little video. Last year I had I think four or five fig trees in sips 
and they were first year cuttings from that January of last year. And those grew massive. I think I had the tallest one might have been about uh, 11, 11 or 12 feet uh, from the soil line. And the trunk is, uh, got very thick because of that. So if you grow that single leader method uh, and you get a really tall trunk and you have a bigger pot, so a big pot uh, grown as a single leader will get you a very thick trunk. So that trunk is uh, thicker than a lot of folks, uh, their second year tree. Uh, but anyway, it gives you a big head start. That's the, that's the whole idea of growing with a single leader. It gets your tree uh, starting to shape it the way you want to, um, or at least one really good method to do so. So this is the uh, SIP method. Uh, go through, show you how to do this, and it's going to be a little bit improved from what I've done last year. Um, those SIPs are still working. Uh, I did a couple different methods, but what we're going to do this year um, I did this last year as well, but anyway, we're going to use these pipes. This is a 4-inch pipe. I think I got a 6-inch pipe, um, which some of the videos Leon recommends uh, at the very beginning were 6-inch pipes, but, but he works on a farm, so he had that laying around. You'd have to special order it like I did, but it's not necessary. 4-inch pipe will work fine, and we're going to put this in the bottom here. I'm going to show you how to cut it, measure it, and I'll tell you at the end of the video where I got, the, where I got this pot. This is was 1099 I believe and it's 20 gallons and it's built pretty well so uh, for 10 11 dollars a 20 gallon pot is pretty darn cheap um, so anyway so this this pot this bucket no holes in the bottom no drainage holes that's where we're gonna have water reservoir so let me start to measure and show you what this will look like when it's kind of set up. So um, I'm going to cover this and because uh, you don't want any soil to get in there or roots. That's where the water is going to be sitting. So, so just to show you what it looks like. <clears throat> All right, so this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to drill a hole in the side, and then the water's going to fill up. Soil's going to go right on top of here. All right, so let's get to making this. So this pipe, um, <clears throat> so this pipe is four inch pipe. And there's two kinds of pipe. There's, uh, yeah, just four inches. Um, there's two kinds. This one is solid, and there's kind of with little holes, little little slits in it. You can use either one. All right. So what we're going to do is, uh, well, there's two methods. The method I showed you with the one pipe around and this one in the middle. So we have one, two, three, four caps we have to make. The other way to do it. is to set the three, three pipes just like this inside and then cap each one of these, okay? So if you get this exact same um, bucket, which you don't need to do, you can get any bucket, but this is incredible price. If you do it that method, you have uh, 10 inch, two 10 inch, and a 17 inch. Okay, so that's one method to put these pipes inside, just like that. The method where, that I'm going to use is So you take a uh, pipe like this and you're gonna cut it at about 39 and a half inches, all right? So it doesn't have to be perfect. We are 
trying to grow fig trees. We're not trying to launch a space shuttle, all right? So what I need to do next is just get a little bit of this cover for the ends. Now, let's talk about this. This is a high grade uh, commercial um, weed barrier. So get the best, best kind you can get. It's water permeable, obviously. Um, but this is a uh, commercial grade that's gonna last a long time. So I'm just gonna zip tie this onto here, right like that. So you can get just any zip ties. Just put them going the same way, like that. Looks like I'll need three. All right, three zip ties. You don't need to order big, long, expensive ones. So let's put this on here. make that nice and tight, it's not going to go anywhere. And then cut off the excess. There you go. This won't go anywhere, it can get down in the grooves. Um, to cut this pipe, you can use a hacksaw. Um, you can probably do it with a, um, a utility knife, but just be careful. Um, and the spirals, so you have to kind of cross one of the spirals. So I think I have about 10 of these since they were so cheap. Lots of way to, ways to do this. You can use twine, whatever. I think zip ties are probably the most reliable. You can pull them tight until they get down in one of the grooves so it's nice and secure. There we go. So All right, so put the first one in. Don't worry about it, that's getting dirty inside. You're gonna put dirt in there. Just 
So with the tube that circles, you just do, you're going to be doing two, you know, you have two fewer of the ends to make the zip ties. Um, that's really the only benefit. So if you're doing 10 or 15 of these, that'll maybe cut down on some time. Another way to do these is with coffee cans, um, milk jugs. I think I have one with milk jugs. All sorts of uh, just containers that are going to hold space and hold water. Um, and I have a couple like that. Um, I'm not sure how well they're working anymore. Um, I've had them for, this will be the third year, but the second year for the trees. So I think next year I'm going to take them apart, take a look at them, and uh, maybe transfer those to another cleaner um, bucket. But um, this has fewer points to fail. I'm not sure how well those uh, milk jugs hold up. But, I mean, the trees grow, so um, I can just tell when you fill it and they drain Sometimes it doesn't drain as fast and so on, or when you fill it, it drains immediately and it's not really getting in there. So what I'm doing with the older ones is I'll plug up the hole, fill the water, <clears throat> let it settle for a bit, and then unplug it, and then it drains out so I know that it's getting in there. Otherwise, if you're just using a hose or whatever, it just kind of flies out. So I'm going to have to re-examine those next year, but hopefully this method is going to be a little, um, a little more reliable. There's a little gear. I think it's going to be over here um, on your YouTube screen tap that gear and you can hit speed and just tap it at 1.25 uh, so you can get through some of the quiet parts a little faster. I find that's a little convenient sometimes on the kind of how-to videos. All right, that's all we need. It doesn't have to be pretty. Okay. This pipe, this is a one and a quarter pipe. I would suggest uh, one inch. Um, this is just what I have around. You can go smaller, but it gets to be kind of a pain to uh, put the water in, depending on what you're using. So you want it about this high off the top of the lid there. So you want to cut it at an angle so it doesn't just so the water doesn't do that and trap this way, the water's gonna come out. And my bucket here is about 17 and a half inches tall. So that's 20 inches in the high end and about 19 short end, so just about an inch angle there. All right, so now I'm actually gonna fill this up with water to see how much water gets in the reservoir. So let's do that right now. So I have a big red uh, funnel that I walk around, put on here so I can dump in the um, um, fertilization mixture. And I'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, I've not, never done this before, so I'm not sure how much water the other sips hold. <clears throat> All right. So 
so this looks like it's going to be about two gallons because this is popping up because of the water but this will stay down when the uh, dirt's in there and everything and you can see well let's see it may hold a little more i'll keep going All right, here's a third gallon. I'm pouring it through here. I could just dump it, but I just want to see how it reacts and gets in there, how the flow is. Okay, so I'd say it's um, about two and a half gallons of water reservoir. Um, all right. So the water sip, uh, slips in here, but it doesn't just fly out. Um. <clears throat> All right, so this weed barrier is permeable, but it's um, does slow the water down a good deal. So now for drilling the hole. Um, so you can use 3 8 or half inch. Um, so, uh, you know, 3 8 4 8 is half an inch. Uh, this is 11 30 seconds. So 12 30 seconds is your 3 8 something like that. So let's see, we're going to do um, four inches, so we're going to have the hole at three inches. So what I'm going to do is, um, I can just eyeball it or just make a little scratch. I'm going to lay the pipe, lay the pipe in here, and then just scratch the uh, the tub, and then drop down about an inch. Because you do want air. Uh, you don't want the water to fill all the way up here. Uh, you want that gap of air at the top. Um, so the water's gonna water level will be right about here, not up like that. Okay. So so we have the hole right here. It's uh, drilled in three inches high, and we have the four inch pipe. And with where the pipes meet, the, the weeping holes on this side, the pipes are gonna meet on the other side, okay? And the pipe is gonna go in, in between where the pipes meet, all right? Everything's nice and pushed down, and time to add soil. Um, and I'm going to put the pipe in between, right up in here. So, potting soil I'm using, the mix, uh, is, I made this, it's 40% uh, uh, mushroom compost, 40% um, peat, 60% um, perlite, just kidding, 20% uh, uh, perlite, so 40, 40, 20, and mix that together, 
and then you can do some amendments. Um, so Don Sanders uh, suggested that potting mix and uh, amendments. I uh, put some gypsum in there. Um, let's see, lime. Figs love lime, and uh, so you can put a good little bit of lime in there. And um, let's see, worm castings and a good couple scoops of um, uh, organic fertilizer, something with the numbers very close to each other, like uh, organic chicken manure or organic chicken fertilizer. Um, or, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, um, something close to like a, you know, 434 or 555 or something like that, organic. That's great. And um, it doesn't have to be exact. The other thing you can do is get Miracle Grow potting mix, potting mix, not garden soil, uh, and then add some perlite to that. Uh, you, can get, you can get good results that way, and actually that's what Leon suggests, just Miracle Grow potting mix. Um, it, I think our figs would do better with a little more aerated, so you can add some perlite to that. And, um, you know, like I said, we're not trying to, it doesn't have to be exact. Don't get caught up in all these exact mounts. I think I have a video short that says um, what to do for um, some of the other amendments I do. Um, and uh, don't get too caught up in it. You know, like I said, we're not launching a space shuttle. We're just growing some figs. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a cutting from this year. And uh, these kind of started late and they're kind of slow, but um, when they go in here, they're just gonna explode. Um, let's talk about the watering that I use, the fertilizing. The fertili fertilizer I use is um, Jack's 20-20-20. Uh, and I used that last year on first year cuttings and I got figs, okay? Um, you can just keep it like that, you're gonna be fine. If you want to uh, switch to something with a little more of a bloom boost, that's fine. Just whatever works for you, try it. Um, you know, uh, there's some basics to go on, but I wouldn't listen to somebody that says it has to be this way or it has to be that way or this doesn't work or that doesn't work. Uh, people get good figs with 20-20-20 and other people who do more of a, a bloom boost uh, phosphorus swear that that's the only reason that they have figs uh, so take that for what it's worth just experiment see what works for you and then you know find something that works and then you can experiment again from there um, don't get too caught up in that all right so the first one is going to be an andata this is quite a popular uh, variety this past year because Fruit Nuts said it was his best all-around fig and people just went bonkers. So uh, Andata is still pretty hard to get and uh, I'm going to put it in this sip. I have another one but we're, it's not, you know, it's uh, April 29th, not even to May yet. Um, so these are, these figs are about to really take off but this is kind of a small cutting. Uh, other ones are pretty big so far but anyway. So, I'm going to get this down in here a little bit, and I'm going to try to focus on the bottom branch, so I'm going to have it tilted a little bit, and then I'm going to air layer off this other one here when it gets a good deal bigger and the plant gets established. So, uh, usually I'd like to put a, like a two gallon in here. Um, size-wise, or, I mean, these work. Uh, I don't think this is gonna be as well-rooted uh, as other other ones, but um, I need just to uh, move along and get this thing rolling. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here carefully. Um, but you can do tree pots straight into a 20 gallon. Um, uh, if you put a tree pot into a, into a sip, you just, uh, you know, you're gonna water it in, Check, check the moisture, and, um, but don't overwater it. And you really don't even need to fill the reservoir uh, for a while anyway. 
so because the roots aren't down there to wick up anything. Uh, the soil is a little pre-moistened, so it'll, it'll start to pull it up. Um, so the fertilization that I use in here, so what Leon says is um, only feed, you don't have to feed your plants all the time, just only on days where you eat. So, so his philosophy with tomatoes and so on, he gets these amazing tomatoes with uh, sips, is to, um, to use a liquid fertilizer every day. So that peats is five tablespoons for a five gallon bucket. So what I do is I take that down to about three. Um, so an outdoor strength, full strength would be uh, five tablespoons of uh, Jack's 2020. It's called Jack's Peat 2020. Uh, I just do three and that's perfectly fine um, because it's gonna sit there. It's, they're gonna drink it every day. Um, so I don't think you need the five, but you can certainly experiment, do whatever you wanna do. All right, so. Okay, decent roots, but not really uh, super well rooted. So now I'm just going to add in the, um, um, I think I'm going to go much lower for the first watering in. Um, and uh, so I know that's about two and a half gallons. So I can measure things out and then put, you know, whatever I want in here. So if you start to see that you're not getting two and a half gallons in here, um, measure whatever pot you're using like I did with the water. So you know how much water is in your reservoir capacity. And um, that way, if you're only getting a gallon in there, something's wrong, you can pull the pipe up a little bit and then stick it back in and all, all of a sudden it unclogs it. Uh, you can try that, you can use a stick, whatever. Um, so whatever pot you're using, go ahead and, and um, check that out. Uh, make sure that when you're filling it up, and it's about once a week, and your trees are going to get bigger than any other tree in a pot because they're always going to have all the water they need. Um, I didn't cover mine, so the rains could dilute whatever. I didn't worry about it too much. If you want to do that, fine. You don't have to. We're not launching uh, space shuttles. We're growing figs. Uh, so, of course, as the time gets closer to um, ripening, um, you know, see how, see how they behave with the reservoir. All right. But... Um, I got figs, so you, you can keep the top dry, let that dry a bit, and let it just get what it needs from down below. Um, don't water the surface, and um, you know, see, see how that works for you. You can take a five-gallon or like a three-gallon. It's a five-gallon trade, so it's really a three-gallon pot, uh, and you can stick that in here and uh, just fill out the rest of the soil and dirt and use that. You can, you know, you can convert just about anything over to a sip. Um, you can root prune a little bit, uh, you know, chop off about that much of the bottom of your, um, your uh, pots um, when they're not um, awake yet. I wouldn't do them once you have a leafing out tree. I wouldn't chop off all those roots. Um, but you can certainly take a smaller pot, anything from a five gallon trade, which is a three, because that's about that big, um, or a two gallon or one gallon down to a, um, a four by nine tree pot. Fits in here, easy, easy to convert it. And um, you know, you might be able to fit something bigger, but you're gonna have to tease out some of the soil that's in that a much bigger pot. So I think that's it. Um, oh, so now that you've stayed to the end of the video, I got this uh, pot at Lowe's, 1099, and it's called 
rope handle tub and it's um, you know 20 gallon and it's 1099 you can't beat that anywhere that's a fantastic price for a pot this big and uh, you can just drill holes and use these for pots whatever you want to do um, these are pretty good um, I'd say they're at least as strong as any 20 gallon pot you're going to get from a uh, hydroponic store or something like that. So 1099, you can't beat it. Uh, it's got little handles. Um, and I have some older pots have been in the sun for three years and the handles still work. So it's getting a little brittle, but I think it, it's pretty good so far. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and, and put them in the um, comments and let me know if you're going to do sips this year. I guarantee you, It'll be the biggest tree you have um, in your garden, especially with the cuttings. You can take your cuttings. They're probably not really potted up yet. Do this method. You're going to absolutely love it. And, um, and you can use different kind of fertilizer. You don't have to use 20-20-20 if you don't like it. Uh, you can certainly use uh, something with more bloom boost or start with the uh, uh, high nitrogen and, and switch after a couple of weeks or three weeks or middle of June. When you start to get fruit set, switch over to Bloom Boost. Uh, you can really do whatever you want to do. So I'm just telling you what I do. It works. That doesn't mean it can't be better. Um, so go ahead and hit subscribe. And I uh, appreciate if you watch all my videos all the way through. Share them. Uh, if they get boring, just hit the little, uh, little button to make the, the speed go faster and get through some of the dead, dead zones or, or make me talk faster, whatever. Um, thanks a lot, and I'll get more videos coming out soon as, uh, as we get into May. You're going to have a lot of fun videos coming out. Thanks a lot.